All right, then, my friends. So now we have run the constitution command and that updated the constitution file with some governing principles for any new spec or plan that we make. And now we can go ahead and make a new spec by using the specify command. All right, so we want to use this specify command now, which is what we'd use to make a high level spec of a new feature or even a whole segment of the application. Now, personally, I found that working on contained features works better than trying to one shot an entire application with a single spec. That's just my experience. And I have seen other people use this to flesh out the entire thing in one go. It can work. But when you do that, I feel like there's more room for the models to veer off track and start doing things it shouldn't, even with this spec kit set up in place. Now, that's not always the case, and I have tried building out quite extensive specs for apps over the last week or two with some success, but for me, I personally prefer to work through several slightly smaller features and sections one at a time. That's not to say the features should be really small, because then spec kit probably becomes a little bit overkill. So we're going to be trying to strike some kind of happy in between ground. And to begin with, we'll give it a fair amount of work to do just to get the main functionality of the app up and running. So then let's make this spec by using the forward slash specify command in the chat over here, followed by our input, which should outline what we want to make a spec for. Now, this outline should be high level and it should focus on the what and the why instead of the how. So we shouldn't be going into detail about the underlying technologies or the architecture that we'll be using, but instead focus on the user experience, I guess. So I'm just going to paste in a little snippet that I've already prepped, which says this initial page setup dash. This application should be a goal tracking web app called do it. There should be two columns, a left one where current goals are shown along with how many days left the user has to achieve the goal and a right one where completed goals are. Each goal can be checked using a checkbox and then either moved to the completed column or permanently deleted. To add new goals, a user can click on a button to open a new goal form in a modal title and end date fields. Goals reaching their end date within three days are highlighted. Let's use a modern light theme with font pastel colors. Now, before we send this off, I want to dive into the specify command and the prompt a little bit to see what's going to happen when we run it. So I'm just going to click off the chat window for now and then head to the prompts folder to open the specify prompt. Now, again, this prompt might look a little bit different to yours because spec kit is getting updated quite frequently and I know the prompts are being changed as well, but the main body of the prompt and the desired functionality should hopefully be very similar. So then we can see up here that again, we're taking those arguments from the command, which is everything we write after the specified command. And it says here, the arguments represent the new feature that we're making. All right, so then it does four things essentially. It runs a create new feature script from inside the script file, and we'll see that in a moment. But essentially, this script does a couple of things. It makes and checks out a new feature branch for us, and it makes a new folder to store the new spec file in, and it also creates that new spec file. Then it loads the spec template file from the template folder to understand the structure of a spec file. After that, it writes the spec inside the new spec file, which was created. And finally, it tells the agent to report back to us, including this information. So let's have a very quick look at that create new feature script from inside the scripts folder. And I don't want to go through each and every line of this, but just highlight a couple of things it's doing. So if we scroll down here a little bit, we'll eventually see a new variable called branch name or something similar. And this is where the script is creating a new branch to work on the spec and feature. So it's not making changes directly then to the main branch. Now it decides the branch name by using a feature number and then the first three words of the arguments or the feature description that we gave it. For this reason, I normally make sure the first three words, if we open the chat back up, are what I'd like the branch to be called. In this case, initial page setup, right? Anyway, then we try to switch to that branch somewhere down here. Then we make a copy of the spec template file and we place it inside a new feature folder. And then finally, down here, there's a bunch of JSON outputs to the terminal, like the branch name, the new spec file location, the feature number, etc. And all of those values from the terminal are then available for the coding agent to use. So for example, if we go back to the specify prompt, we can see that it references the spec file value and tells the agent to update that file to write the new specification. So it's grabbing that from the terminal, that spec file value. Anyway, by all means, dig deeper into this. But for now, I'm going to close down these files, then open the chat back up and we're going to fire off this prompt to see what happens. <music> Right 
right then, so it looks like everything's done. So I'm gonna scroll up here and have a little bit of a nose here. So we can see it's created a new branch called 001 initial page setup. And down here we can see we're on that branch, which is good. So we're not working on the main branch anymore. And it's created this spec file, which we see over here. And also if we open up the file tree, we should see that that's inside a folder called 001 initial page setup, the same name as the branch, and that's inside a specs folder. So whenever we create specs in the future, they're all gonna go inside this new specs folder. And also it's gonna create a new folder for that particular spec as well, which will be the same name as the branch. The only file it's created in this stage is this spec file. So then, down here, there's a summary of the spec file down here, but instead of reading that, we'll just go straight to the spec file itself and glance through this. So this stuff at the top, this is a little bit of metadata, I guess you could say. It's got the feature branch name, when this spec was created, the status, which is draft, then our initial user input. Now down here, we've got this execution flow, and these are actually instructions to the coding agent on how to go about creating this spec. This was all in the spec template that it used. So it basically says get our input, extract any key concepts, and then anything that's unclear from our user input, we need to add this needs clarification token to. Now you might see in your specs that you're gonna have some little sections that say needs clarification. And you can go in and edit those, or you can just run the clarify command, which we'll see in the next lesson, and that's gonna to help to update those sections as well. Anyway, down here, there's some more instructions on how to actually generate this file. We're not going to go through those. And if we scroll down here, I'm going to come to the user story. Okay, so this is essentially the first real part of the spec. We have the primary user story. So what's actually happening for this feature? And it summarizes it right here. A user wants to track their personal goals with deadlines to stay motivated and organized. They need to see their active goals at a glance, understand how much time they have left, celebrate completed goals and easily add new ones. The interface should be visually appealing and encourage regular use. That sounds all right to me. Then we've got some acceptance scenarios. So these are scenarios that a user might go through on the web page. For example, given a user visits the Dewey tab when they view the main page, then they see two distinct columns, right? Current goals on the left and completed goals on the right. So these are things that have to be adhered to. Then down here, we've got some edge cases, which are basically questions that need answering at some point. So a lot of the time I would see needs clarification tokens right here. I don't see them right now, but in the next lesson, when we do look at the clarify command, it might ask us some of these questions from the edge cases, just so that it knows in the future when it comes to implement this spec, what to do in these scenarios. Down here, we've got some functional requirements and that's what this FR stands for. So there's one, two, 14. Right, so basically these are all the kind of things that the app must do. So for example, the system must display two distinct columns, current goals and completed goals. The system must show each current goal with its title, calculated days, remaining until end dates, and a checkbox, blah, 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 blah. You can read through all of these. I'm not gonna do that right now, but at a glance, they look okay. Then we've got some key entities. So we've got the goal, which represents user's objective with the title, end date, completion status. These are basically like the data models, I guess. And we've also got the user session, which represents the user's interaction with the app, all right? Then finally, we've got a content quality checklist down here. So as the AI makes this spec, it goes through this and checks off each one to make sure it's done all of these things. So there's no implementation details. And I said before, remember, we don't go into any technical details really in the spec. We keep it at a high level and focus on the what and the why, not the how. So it's checked that off. Then we have this one focused on user value and business needs written for non-technical stakeholders. So again, it's not technical and all mandatory sections are completed. Then we've got another checklist down here. So there's no needs clarification markers. The requirements are testable, blah, 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 blah. And then this down here, another checklist. Anyway, I'm not gonna go through all of this. We have the spec file now which is that high level spec. And from this, we'll be able to actually plan the feature using a more technical approach, which we'll see later. In the next lesson though, we're gonna use that optional command clarify just to clarify a few underspecified sections of this spec.